Within the table on the front is just a review of what we've done so far with circles to compare the different um, measurements and way to measure circles. So within this first row of the table, when you have your angle in degrees, so once again, it has to be a central angle when you're talking about um, a radian measure. So given the central angle in degrees, we know that arc QS is also 120 degrees. So one of the typos within the top, I want you to get rid of the word length here and length here. So arcs can be measured in terms of uh, a linear unit. That's length. You're walking along the circle. They be, can be measured in terms of degrees. So think about a rotation when you think about a degree measure. And then also now in terms of a radian. So here's our formula for arc length. It's usually theta, and it's on the back, theta over 360 times 2 pi r. Okay. Down below is the same angle of 120 degrees, but measured now in radians. Okay, so to convert 120 degrees times pi over 180 gives us 2 pi over 3 radians. And then the arc can also be labeled or measured in terms of radians, but not length. That's why we had to cross it out. So examples 1 and 2 below are just a review of what we did yesterday. Okay, so in example number 1, find the value of theta in terms of radians and in terms of degrees. Well, theta is the measure of a central angle, so therefore in radians, it's the same as the arc. So theta is also equal to pi over 2 radians. Which equals how many degrees? So, again, pi radians is equivalent to 180 degrees, so you can simply substitute and do 180 over 2, or you can take um, the pi over 2, on your state test, and what's the conversion factor? We multiply by pi over 180 or 180 over pi? 180 over pi, because you want the pi's to cancel out. So 180 over 2 is how many degrees? 90, good. So this is looking at the arc and the angle in terms of a radian or a degree measure. And then number two, Find the measure of the indicated arc in terms of radians and degrees. And I actually, now that I think about it, I don't like that they use S. That's something I will highlight in pink and change for next year. Because S, when they use it, and in the formula for arc length, so that's a linear unit, not necessarily a degree or radian. So let's change that to an X. So find the measure of arc X in terms of radians. Well, if the angle is in terms of radians, it's a central angle, so the arc x is also, that says pi over 3. Which is how many degrees? 60. Good. 180 divided by 3. So on the back, we're going to take a look now at arc length and then the next page area, okay? Within the first part of the table, so given theta in degrees, you've already seen that formula. It's just a portion, your arc length is a fraction of the total circumference. The circumference formula is on your reference sheet. You can use pi d or you can use the 2 pi r. Another typo is that there's supposed to be a space that's A round an answer. Remember, is an approximation. You always need to leave your answer every time, unless they specifically tell you to round it, in an exact form, which in terms of arc length is in terms of pi. So now arc length when you're given the angle in radians. So this is the only time you'll be able to use method two, only. So there's a specific formula only when your central angle is in terms of radians. Method one, 
convert the theta, which is your angle, your central angle, in two degrees, and do it this way, like we've always done it. Method two, we know that 360, here's the second typo, it's theta over 360, which is the whole, 360 is equal to 2 pi, where 180 degrees is pi. So if we know 360 is equivalent to 2 pi, to derive the new formula, if we substitute, so using substitution, replace 360 degrees with 2 pi and do the math, we'll put that over 1, what is theta over 2 pi times 2 pi r? If you reduce, what's the sum factor we can cancel out? The 2 pi. So cancel out 2 pi here, 2 pi here. It's just theta over 1 times radius over 1, which is theta times the radius. So um, this used to be an Algebra 2 topic um, because you, I don't believe you'll see radians again until calculus. So she used the saying SOAR to help you remember. So S equals theta R or SOAR. You can always use the S equals theta R. You don't have to rewrite it in terms of theta or the radius. But just so you know, the angle is equivalent to the ratio of what? In terms of radian measure, the angle is equivalent to the ratio of the, you solve for theta. The opposite of multiplying theta by r would be to divide. So theta in radians is equivalent to the ratio of the angle, uh, or the angle is equivalent to the arc length to radius, where the radius is equivalent to the arc length to the angle. So again, I'm going to use both methods in the first example, and then I'll ask you which one you want to do for number four. So let's draw a circle to represent the problem in number three. This is so handy. I'm going to grab the compass on the board. We have a radius of three feet. We're trying to, we're going to find the arc length of uh, the segment cut by a central angle with a measure of three pi over four radians. So it doesn't have to be drawn to scale. So this is three pi over four radians, and I want to find arc length. So let's take a minute and do it in degrees. So what is, if you do it on your calculator, um, three times 180 over four. So if we actually do method one and convert, so three times 180 degrees over four is how many degrees? method number one. Three times 180 over four is, does anyone have it? 135. So now, again, since we've been doing it since the beginning of the year, 135 over 360 times two pi times the radius of three um, what is the arc length of the segment? So it, we don't have to round. It doesn't tell us to round, so we're going to have an exact answer. So um, 135 times 6. You can actually leave the pi out. 135 times 6 over 360 pi. So what is that fraction? So you can do the calculation separate, and then hit math, enter, enter. But what is the improper fraction for 135 times 6 over 360? 9 fourths. Good. So I'm going to write it 9 pi over 4. Now, it says length. So even though pi is also in our radian measure, we're looking at length here, and our unit should be feet. So that's doing it the old way, just taking the step to convert to degrees. The new formula 
So only uh, working, so I'm going to make no. So working with radians, we can use S equals theta R. So all we do to find the arc length is take the angle, multiply by the radius. So the angle is 3 pi over 4 times the radius of 3. You can put that over 1. 3 pi times 3 is 9 pi over 4. And there's our answer. So it's much shorter. Again, to find the arc length, you just take the angle, the central angle in radians, it must be in radians, times the radius. It's just, it's geometry. There's so many formulas, distance formula, midpoint formula, and now this formula. There's so many formulas to memorize. I wanted to show you both methods because, great, if you can remember this, but you can always convert because that's on the reference sheet, and then just do it the way we've been doing it all year. Okay? So let's look at number four. So the tip of a pendulum after swinging, can you demonstrate, you know, what the pendulum swinging looks like with your... Pencil? Okay, good. So we have an idea. It's like this. So say you start out, your pen looks like this. It's going to swing over to this side, and therefore it looks like the sector of a circle. So the tip of the pendulum, after swinging through an arc of two and a half radians, Um, forms an arc whose length is 10 inches. Find the length of the pendulum. The length of the pendulum is what part of the sector? Here's our pendulum. If I drew the whole circle, that would be the radius. So within the picture, you have two different measurements for the arc. Um, we could have added a third measurement, which could be in terms of degrees, right? There's three different ways to look at the arc. If, though, the arc is measured in radians or degrees, you also know the central angle is the same in terms of a degree or radian measure. So I'm going to take this 2.5 radians and move it to the angle. So we have one measurement for the arc, and that's the length. So using, let's use S equals theta R to at least practice that formula. Because I have the angle in terms of radians, again, the S is the arc length, theta is the measure of the angle in radians, and R is the radius. So now that I have the arc length is 10 inches, we have 10 equals. Theta, in terms of radians, is 2.5 times R. Divide by 2.5, and the radius is 4 inches. Okay. In number five, it says, in the diagram, the circle shown has a radius of 8 centimeters, which is marked. Angle theta intercepts an arc with a length of 14 pi. What is the measure of angle theta in radians? So since it wants the angle in radians and gives us a length of the arc, we can use S equals theta R. So I'm going to do that first, and then I will do it in terms of degree. Okay? So the arc length is 14 pi. We're trying to find theta, so I'm going to leave the symbol theta there. You can call it x if you want, and then times 8. And the opposite of multiplying by 8 is dividing. So the 8s cancel out, and theta in radians, so in terms of pi, we just reduce 14 eighths, 2. 2 goes in there 7 times, 2 goes in there 4 times, 7 pi over 4 radians. To show you how to do this in terms of degrees, 
Okay, so in terms of degrees, we know that arc length equals theta over 360 times 2 pi r. This is the formula from the first unit. So if you know the arc length is 14 pi, we're trying to find theta um, and then times 2 pi times 8. So I'll pause there for a second. So that's our formula from unit 1. And this would give us the angle in degrees. So to solve for um, theta, we can cancel out our delta pi because it's on both sides of the equation. Then what would you do to both sides? Maybe if I rewrote it as 14 equals, because there's a lot there. So theta, if I put this over 1, when you multiply fractions, numerator times numerator, so 2 times 8 because theta can, or pi canceled out, would be 16 theta over 360. So I just mean the right one fraction. And then solve for theta. You could multiply both sides by 360. You could set up a proportion. So multiply by 360. 14 times 360 is 5,040. Divide by 16, and theta equals 315 degrees. And then on your test, you take that 315, multiply by pi over 180, and you get 7 pi over 4 radians. Any questions on that? So to finish with area, there is a formula, again, for area, but you don't have to use it. You can convert to degrees or go back and forth between the two. So here's the formula, again, when you're given theta in degrees. So it's a fraction of the total area. Again, the typo should be A-rounded. Um, and so, of course, when you're given your angle in radians, you have a couple options. You can convert the radians to degrees, do it the same way we've been do it, doing it, or use the formula. So to derive the formula, same typo, it should be just 2 pi. This formula, when we substitute the 360 for 2 pi, or substitute the 2 pi for 360, do the 2 pi cancel like they did um, for circumference? What cancels here when you reduce? Just the pi. So this is theta over 2, or 1 half theta times r squared. So there's the area formula with radians. So to finish the last question, I will do it using both methods. What is the area uh, of the sector? So I'll draw a circle again. Is, uh, central angle is 6 pi over 5 radians. So on your calculator, we'll do it the first way. Convert that to degrees. What's 6 times 180 over 5? We'll do it in terms of degrees. 6 times 180 over 5. What'd you get? Two, sixteen. So let's do this in terms of degrees first. So it'd be two hundred and sixteen 
out of 360 times pi r squared. We're going to leave it in exact form, so we just need to do on the calculator 216 times 36 over 360, leave the pi out. And in simplest form, what's our final answer? And then we'll finish with the radian calculation. You can take and do some canceling or reducing three, uh, 36 within the 360 10 times, and then 216 over 10 reduces to yeah, 108 pi over 5. Again, what is the area? So even though that has pi, that's not a radian measure, so I need my unit of inches squared. And then to finish, using the one-half theta r squared, again, only when working in radians, one-half theta r squared, your theta is 6 pi over 5. And what's r squared? 6 squared would be 36. So we can do some cross-canceling here as well. So 2 goes into 6 3 times, and then 3 times 36, 3 times 6 is 18, carry the 1, is 108 pi over 5. So in both of these new formulas, it is shorter, and when you do your homework, you need to decide. And I would do the method that you think, come June, what am I going to remember? Am I going to remember the formulas, or should I practice converting and then doing it the same way we've always done it? Okay, so apply that method when you do your homework tonight, because it's definitely shorter to use the formulas. It's just a matter of, are you going to remember it come June?